we're gonna do something a little different um, than we typically do. I'm not frying, I'm doing the pan sear, then we're gonna do uh, our sauce, then we're gonna get started. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know, uh, then we can, we can get started. So first, then we're gonna mix some, the traditional Haitian black rice as well. Uh, very uh, particular, and it's made with the black mushrooms, or as we call it, Jojo. And then I'm using uh, parboiled basmati rice. Um, this is my this is my uh, my favorite, my personal favorite rice. Uh, you don't typically have to use this rice, but this is my favorite. I I, I believe it gives you the best flavor. It gives you the best uh, overall taste. So, what are we gonna do with our fish? So typically, um, when we do red snappers, so just a little. A couple facts about red snappers, about fish in general. When you buy fish, you want to make sure that um, the eyes are still, you can still see the eyes, the eyes are still visible. Um, uh, it still has a, has a, smells like, you know, a fish, but it doesn't have a, a potent smell like it's going bad. And, you know, once you press on the skin, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, if you touch it, the skin doesn't really, um, sit in like usually if it if it's good if you press it the skin should have a bounce back if it's not the skin would just kind of it'll kind of mush because the fish is going bad so you want to you want to look at those things uh when you're buying your fish so i just wanted you guys to see so what i'm going to do to make this a little upscale i'm using um you know if you want to if you go to like a fine dining restaurant um they typically use we us haitians are the only ones that use the uh that eat the head, but um, every other culture they eat the uh, the tail, and everybody gets so confused as to what to do with the with the head. So what we're gonna do is I have my fish uh, marinated in in ippies for a couple of hours. You can do this the day before. I don't personally recommend um, having it marinated for more than uh, twelve hours because once you do the vinegar starts to cook the fish, uh, so you don't want that. Um, so I just marinated it for a couple of hours, and um, I like my fish to have a really, really crispy skin. So what we're gonna do is, just so you guys can see, I have my fish right here. Since it's been marinated, I made incision in the tails, so you could see, um, so the seasoning could go inside of the inside of the fish since that's what I'm using. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to um, kind of pat the skin because I want the skin to be a little crispy. And we're gonna, you know, we're gonna put some salt and pepper on the skin just to make it uh, to have some flavor. And that that gives you a really crispy. Uh, your fish has a really crispy and flavorful uh, skin. So I do salt and pepper on both sides. And it's been marinated for, like I said, for a couple of hours. And the maximum that I would do it for is 12 hours. And you could, you know, you could do, you could do it your own per, uh, particular way, but that's what I would do. So, uh, you start out with some oil. You wanna get your pan really, really hot. Cause if your pan is not hot, the, uh, the fish um, will get stuck to the pan. So you wanna make sure that your pan is really, really, really hot. Um, in the meantime, how you guys doing? Uh, I hope you're doing great. I hope you're staying safe with, this, with the coronavirus. Uh, and if there's any nurses, doctors on here, we thank you, we appreciate you. So, my pan is starting to get hot. I'm gonna start with the oil. This is, the, this is my, my oil that I made, this is a uh, uh, a thyme oil, so I, I literally threw, threw the oil in the pan and let it get warm and add the thyme in there and then the, the oil absorbs the flavor of the thyme. And then when you're doing this, you want to do it with um, a oil that is a low smoke point oil, like uh, canola oil. If you do olive oil, it'll burn really, really fast. So I'm going to take this off the fire real quick and then add my oil. My oil is really hot, so you want to add your oil into the pan and then 
add your fish away from your body. And that's the sound that you're looking for. And then I'm gonna add, I know it's thyme oil. I'm just gonna add some, some fresh thyme in there. Again, that's just uh, building up flavor. I'm gonna turn my fire down a little bit because I don't want my fish to burn. And I'm gonna add some fresh garlic. So now, And you wanna, you know, when you do it, you wanna turn your fire down because if not, um, it'll burn your fish. So, so, and then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna cook it in here, and I'm, I'm gonna finish it off in, in this slow oven. You can do the same at home. You finish it off in your convection oven. So. My pan was just a little bit too hot, but that's okay. So uh, I'm gonna put it to, put this to the side and get rid of this oil because the oil is just gonna it's just gonna burn the fish. So what I'm gonna do now, just clean this pan up. So now, so I'm gonna turn my fire real low. And we're gonna do this, you know, so it'll be not too long. Add my oil again. Because if, if the oil, if, if it burns, it's gonna affect the flavor of your fish. So I have some, some garlic on here. I'm just gonna remove some of the garlic and put it back in the pan. The pan is already hot, so we're good to go. And just leave it on there for about two or three minutes. So while that's um, working, you know, it's going to look like this. You see it? And I have my, my oven on. So what I'm going to do now is um, just stick it in the oven for, for the remainder of the time that I'm making. As a matter of fact, we're gonna do we're gonna do the head too, but we're not gonna plate the head. So what what I would typically do if I was doing this, um, if I was just doing this, I would cut off I would cut up more of the the tail so we can have a longer portion, and then the head I would put it in the pan and make a sauce the pan sauce with it. But for the sake of time, we're not gonna do that. So I got this fish right here. Some more oil. And we're gonna start working on our rice. So, so my fish is working. I'm gonna add some time. And then we're gonna start working on the rice. So now the rice. Um, everybody has different methodologies and um, different ways that they cook rice. This is my methodology. Um, Follow along, so I usually start with a hot pan, oil, and I got some shallots, some fresh shallots, about one tablespoon of shallots, um, and then put it in the pan. And you want to make sure that um, you get a light brown color, and I'm going to do some garlic. About one tablespoon, and one thing about cooking as well, you want to make sure that when you're cooking, the spices are not overpowering the main ingredient. In that case, is the rice. So I still want to be able to taste rice. I still want to be able to taste um, fish. So you want to make sure that the ingredients are not over. Like when I eat the rice, it's not overly um, peppery or it's not overly um, salty. So you're gonna do this. And I'm gonna do some about one more tablespoon of, of parsley, one tablespoon of green onions, and then let that marinate. And then, and then this is where I do my my method right here. So this is the rice, it's already clean. 
You put it in the pan. You're gonna do about two cups, two of these. And then this right here, you just kind of let it, um, this just enhances the flavor of the rice. I just love it. Um, and I use the, the parboiled basmati rice because it just gives the rice an amazing flavor. So this is kind of like, my favorite dish is paella. So this is like a paella method. So when they make a paella, they use the uh, risotto rice. And that's how they start. They start. That's how they start. So this is what my fish head looks like. So I have some color on it. And then we can plate the we can plate the head too. So, so I want to let the rice in the pan. Uh, let it cook in the pan. And then once it starts cooking, you're gonna start. This is gonna start giving you. Uh, um, I call it. I call it music. Um, it's gonna start giving you a sound like if you were making popcorn, but just a little bit um, lower because uh, that's when the rice starts to cook in the pan. And again, I do this because it gives the rice uh, extra flavor. Just to let it work. I'm gonna add just a little bit more oil. And I got my fish right here. My fish is working. I'm going to do some salt and pepper. And then I'm going to stick it into the, uh, the oven. So again, too, when you're cooking, you want to make sure that you allow everything to work for you. So you don't want to be working too hard. So instead of doing something where, um, where you're having to uh, watch multiple things, so you could be working on three, four different things at a time. So you can use the oven, um, something could be boiling. So I'm just gonna pick it up so you guys can see. So it's starting to, it smells amazing. Um, some of the rice, you know, start to add that little pot, make that little, um, that, that little sound, that little music that I tell you guys about. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add about two tablespoons of salt and pepper. And what I typically do is uh, when I do cook, I, I try to add um, um, just a little bit of salt in the beginning and a little bit of salt in the end because you don't wanna add too much because you can always add salt but you can't take it away. So. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of butter. The butter gives your food amazing flavor. And then the thing that brings it all together, and before I, I add the thing that brings it all together, I'm gonna add some, I love seafood, so I'm gonna add some crab base. I'll show you what the product looks like. You can get it on Amazon, or if, you, if you're a Restaurant Depot shopper, you can get it at Restaurant Depot. Um, I just love um, seafood, so. And that gives that takes the rice to another level. And typically, a lot of times when they do make black rice, it's made with uh, seafood. So now the one thing that brings it all together is the white wine. I'm going to add a little bit of white wine. And I know some of you are saying, "Man, why are you adding white wine to rice? It's just..." When you're cooking, you want to add, um, you, you're building flavors. It's like making a song or building a house. So every time you add something, it's building up on the flavors. So now that I have my wine and crab base, I, had to, I have the broth right here uh, the, for the mushroom. So you can do this um, two different ways. This is the mushroom right here. Uh, two different ways. You can boil it or you can let it soak overnight. Um, and then drain it and then get the broth. So what we're gonna do is this, man. Right just add the broth in there. Add 
the broth in there. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. Broth, cover it. And then what we're gonna do now is um, one thing about Haitian cuisine that a lot of people um, a lot of people, I think a lot of people know, but a lot of people don't emphasize on it enough, is that our cuisine is influenced in, is influenced by Spain, Europe, and a lot of different cultures. But I like to say that our cuisine evolved from those cuisines. So some of the things that we have and we do, we can make them, uh, um, we can take them upscale, we can make them a little bit better. So one of those things is our ipis, right? Our ipis is just, is really in, um, a seasoning that, that has uh, almost all the, the full components, you know, the acid, the acidity that you need, the salt, um, the heat, and, and the fat that you need. It has all of it. It has the salt, it has the um, vinegar, it has the um, lemon juice, the oil, um, and salt and pepper. So we're going to make, we're going to use this, this the ipis, to make the take on, on one of my favorite spices. It's, it's Spanish. It's originally um, from Argentina. The chimichurri. So we gotta make. We're gonna use this to make a Haitian version of that. But basically, what we're doing is we we're making an ipis without blending it, and then we're gonna add it on top of the fish as a as a uh, as a complement. So now you wanna start with some fresh chopped parsley. I already chopped it. Um, you wanna do about. Um, I'm making this for two people, so I'm doing it for about, I'm doing about, about one cup of chopped parsley, and then some red onions. Again, all these things are part of the ipis, or the, the Haitian seasoning that we do, or the Puerto Rican call it so frito. So this, and then I do about half a cup of red onions, and then for the color, we're going to do red, yellow, um, and orange peppers. Again, all these things are in our hippies. And then we're going to do salt and pepper. And then it's all about making it look, you know, making it look amazing, making it look pretty. And some scallions, green onions. And then we're going to do oil, that tongue oil. And this tastes, um, it has. The, the longer it sits, the better it tastes. So we, we're gonna do um, some red wine vinegar. And, and then I have a little bit of uh, scotch bonnet pepper, Pimo Pique, and then mix it in there. I'm gonna chip on my rice. Just add a little bit of broth to it. And turn the fire down. So it doesn't burn. So this is what it looks like. And then now all you're doing is the more, the longer it sits, just like if the better it tastes. So you just take this, you know, obviously if you want to make it in a bigger bowl, kind of mix it together. Again, it's gonna add, you know. It's all about visuals, because um, I believe, you know, Asian food is Asian heritage much, much. Asian food has the uh, capability to be just as popular as uh, Spanish food or Italian food or um, French cuisine. It's just up to us to um, to level it up where we are, uh, where we're cooking it, where we're plating. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more salt pepper. And again, this is like, this is going to be good because all that marinade that was on top of the fish, I got rid of it. Um, I patted it down so when the fish is ready, we're going to put it on top of the fish. So, um, and then when we, when we make black rice, typically we do, we do it with green peas or lima beans. So again, in, in an effort to make this a little bit upscale, we're gonna do a little bit. We're gonna do it. We did a little bit different. So what I did was, I took the peas, um, um, 
you could uh, boil it for about two, three minutes. That method is called blanching. And um, you drain the hot water and put it in the blender for, um, it's gonna give you a puree. So we're gonna um, put the puree in the bottom, the rice on top, and um, lay the fish uh, on there. Again, that's, that's different step of layering and cooking. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna grab the sauce. Please excuse me. So, this is our sauce. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. And, and now, it's a puree, so you don't want to overpower and add too much. And the reason, that, you know, we're doing it like this because we want to make, make it upscale. So all you literally do is get a pan on hot water, um, put the peas in there, but you don't want to throw them in there for too long. Because if you throw them in there for too long, um, they start turning brown. And that's another reason why I don't like to typically use the... Um, the green peas and the rice, because if you put it in the rice, it turns it turns brown real fast. So if you do that method, um, or what you can do is if you're using green peas, you can um, add it when the rice is almost ready, so they won't turn brown. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take my rice. We're gonna add some more butter. Everything tastes better with more butter. You gotta be careful because um, a butter will get you um, big really fast. So yeah, I love the um, the paella method. It's my favorite dish, by the way. So I'm always bringing it up. So um, oh, I'm sorry. I'm making black rice with um, with snapper. Uh, we we're taking a, a typical Haitian dish and we're gonna we're making it into something, we're making something a little bit upscale with it. Um, I have uh, chimichurri, which is our a piece, which is everything that we add in our a piece when we put it in a blender. Uh, salt, pepper, vinegar, um, scallions, garlic, and onions and peppers, and kind of mix them together, add some oil. Then we're gonna use that as a, as a top for the fish. We're gonna make this Really, really, really amazing. So now I'm gonna check on my fish. My fish is looking good. So you, you wanna be careful, that's the fish right here, that's the tail. Um, that's what it looks like. And you wanna be careful as well so that your fish doesn't overcook. Um, overcooked fish. It's usually not flaky, it's usually uh, hard. So you wanna make sure that your fish is cooked perfectly. And you know, cooking is really about uh, precision, perfection. Um, and it's something that you really gotta love to do. So, hope everybody's doing good. Rice. And um, I would, I would, I would uh, advise, you know, if you're cooking, you know, try your best to use um, natural ingredients instead of using, you know, um, maggi or anything that that has any extra. Uh, my rule of thumb is if, I, if anything. If there's anything in the product that I can't pronounce, I try not to buy it. So, um, so try to use uh, fresh ingredients because fresh ingredients would enhance your food and make your food taste better. Well, let's take this, take this right here right now, and then I'm gonna put my rice over here, and then we're gonna lay the foundation to start our plating. And again, one of my biggest things is to try to get people away from that myth 
that, you know, it takes five days to make Haitian food. Um, it's really about preparation. If you prep ahead of time, if you prep before, you know, it's not going to take you that long. So. <laughs> um, yes, um, Jojo is very, very hard to find. Um, that's why I said, um, if you can't find it, I mean, I'm not finding you to not use it to use other things, but I'm just saying, if you can't do your best to use natural ingredients, it'll be, you know, that's that's the best way to go. Um, so now, you know, when you're plating, uh, what you want to do is you want to make sure that everything has height, everything has um, depth, colors. Um, if you if you guys see um, my pictures and stuff that I'm doing, I'm always I always have a lot of you know height. Um, because you don't want to have your food, have everything flat on the plate. So you want to have height, you want to have depth, you want to have colors. Because my thing is, <clears throat> when I'm cooking, I want it to be, I want somebody to be able to, I want it to be hard for someone to eat, um, to look at the food and they don't know what to do after, after I give it to them, um, before, before they eat it. Um, that's my, that's, that's what I go by. So now, what we're going to do is, we're gonna start, as we wait for the rice, we're gonna start with the uh, plating process. <laughs> it does take, it does take, um, it does take time to cook, but my thing is, if you are, if you are cooking, um, if you are, if you prepare ahead of time, if you prepare yourself ahead of time, it's, it's not gonna take you a long time in the process. When, um, um, in French cuisine, there's a term called mise en place, which uh, technically means put everything in place. It means that you have everything ready so that when you're cooking, you're not, um, you don't have to stop, you don't have to. So, for example, if you're making, um, if you're making, if you have to marinate your meat, you can make, the, that process could start three, three days in advance. It doesn't have to start, you know, it doesn't have to take five hours. So you could make the end piece the day before and marinate your meat the day after that, and you cook it the day after that. So that process doesn't have to take, you know, five, six hours if you do prep, um, if you do take time to prep um, ahead of time. You know, if you if you prep ahead of time, in the back end, all you gotta do is cook it, and it takes, um, it doesn't take as long. So, um, so what we're gonna do is, I got my, my pea puree again. I'm doing this to elevate the dish. Um, most of the time we have the peas in the dish, so this is gonna add another layer of flavor to the food. So it's all about layering flavors to the food. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna add the peas puree on the bottom, and then um, I have my rice mold right here. We're gonna put the rice on top of the peas because the peas typically go with the rice. And then, um, I have my sauce right here. So, uh, one of the things that, you know, in, in fine dining cuisine, um, in whatever, whatever that you're making, um, fine dining or fresh cuisine, uh, whatever cuisine, uh, one of the things that um, you have to be careful of is, um, you know, when, when you make a sauce, I don't know if you guys have ever seen this. I'm sure you guys have seen this. When you make a sauce, there is a lot of oils or fat on top of the sauce. So one of the things that is um, very, um, you know, in fine dining cuisine, that's one thing that's, you know, that you don't want to do. So one of the ways to eliminate that is if you make your sauce, you have something called an emulsion blender. It's just, um, it looks kind of like this. looks kind of like this. I don't have the top with me, but the bottom looks like this. So when you use those, what it does is emulsifying, it means already bringing the oils and everything everything else in the food together. So a lot of times if you cook with, if there's oil and water, it'll separate. And that's why you have a layer of oil and then a layer of the sauce on the bottom. So what you typically do is you make the sauce and everything in the sauce. That, and, and I'm talking. This is you know, fine dining cuisine. Um, you make the sauce, 
and after making the sauce, you would um, put it in a blender with everything in it. So if there is onions, peppers, and all that stuff, you put it inside the blender and blend it, and then you strain it, and then you have a perfect smooth sauce. So you won't have any butter, any um, anything extra on your sauce. So I'm gonna check on my rice, I'm gonna taste it. And the reason I love um, parboiled basmati rice is, is that it doesn't take a long time to cook. Need some more salt. It doesn't take a long time at all to cook. And I got a little bit more broth right here that I made. And in about five minutes, we're going to start the plating process. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, questions, concerns. And again, it's not that hard. All you got to do is, you know, if you practice it every day, it becomes easier as, you, as, you, as you're doing. So I'm going to take my fish out. Take my fish out so that it can cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out. Um, and, and again, you know, this is this is like this is like art. So everything you want to do, you want to make sure that everything is in sync, everything is perfect. So um, one thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna kind of put the fish somewhere. So if there's any extra oil in there. So that oil could drain off. So on my plate, there's no oil on my plate. So um, you can see my fish. Um, one of the things that happened was um, the, this pan that I that I was using it was a little bit too hot. So the garlic um, burned in the pan, but it's not a problem. Um, so yeah. Ha, huh. no, I put that spoon to the side. I have another spoon right here, so don't worry. I have another one right here. All right, so my rice is about ready. So what we're going to do now, we're going to show you what it looks like. That's what it looks like. Black rice. So what we're going to do now is the plating. So we're going to take about, and again, you know, Fine dining is all about portioning, and uh, I know a lot of people said, um, you know, a lot of the the food and fine dining is not is not it's not enough. We need more food. You know, it's all about portion. It's all about um, making everything look pretty. So I have a mold right here. Um, you can get those molds um, at Restaurant Depot or Amazon. Um, so you want to make sure that everything fits in the mold when you take it off so that the rice don't fall apart. Oh yeah. So, and then what you want to do is you want to make sure that it's visible. So now, I have a little tool here that's pretty cool. It's a, uh, it's like a, it makes shapes on the plate. Um, it's like a design spoon. So we're gonna use it to, to put the sauce on the plate. This is the tomato sauce right here. And I did that same method that I told you guys about with um, having the sauce, boiling it, um, and everything that was left over. What I did was I just put it in the blender and strained it. And now we have a perfect sauce that is not oily. 
So now what we're doing is I'm just gonna make this, clean it up a little bit. And then what we're gonna do now is we got our chimichurri, which is our ippies. Again, it's just about finding different ways to elevate the food that we already have. So we're gonna take our chimichurri, we'll kind of put it on the top of the fish, make it look good. And now the last thing that I'm gonna do is add the final touches. I have uh, edible flowers. Um, so you, know, you wanna make sure that everything looks uh, amazing. I'm all about, you know, presentation. So make sure everything looks amazing. And then we're gonna do some flowers just to add colors and textures. Um, I have some edible flowers right here, so we're gonna add a few to the dish. So if you're in a relationship, you want some brownie points, let me know, I'll help you make, I'll help you make a dish that looks just like that. So you wanna kinda, again, this is about, this is about taking care of the person that's gonna eat the food. It's not about it's not about me, it's not about um, the chef, it's really about the person that's eating the food. And this is simple. This is it, this is what it looks like. Um, yeah, so hope that was, uh, I mean, you could do pickles, you could do, because uh, this initially is kind of like a piglis. This is, um, it has all the components, but the only thing it doesn't have is the cabbage. So you can use this. Uh, if you want, you can do the piglis, but you just make it look beautiful. Um, so this is just the basics of um, you know, fine dining and how we can take, how we can make Haitian cuisine upscale. We're going to do it like Trump, make Haitian cuisine upscale again. Uh, let me know if you have any questions comments or concerns uh thank you for rocking with me uh you can do plantains too so what i typically do I, I see the question about plantains i have a i have two things going on here guys um so what i typically do with plantains is if you grew up in haiti you know about papita so you, i usually um slice the plain uh, the plantains real thin and then add it as a crunch factor to the dish to make it look good but i didn't do that today i should have i should have done that uh, yes, you can follow me. Um, I'm on uh, Instagram at Cuisine King with a K, K U I S I N E King, Cuisine King with a K. Uh, and somebody asked me, teach me where to get mushrooms. If you're in, if you in the DMV, let me know. I'll, uh, I got you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, any other questions? Thank you so much. Uh, well, yeah, so I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to post these pictures, and after that, I'm going to go eat this. So thank you for rocking with me. I appreciate you guys. Um, sorry. Um, I, sorry, I, you know, I was not able to answer all your questions. If you're able to uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram about any questions that you have, I got you. All right, thank you so much. Again, this is all about Haiti. I'm big on Haiti. I'm big on our culture. I'm big on um, showing people what we have and how we can bring it to the next level. Um, and I believe we have the best of the best. So, um, yeah, so we have, we have the best of the best when it comes to everything. When it comes to food, when it comes to everything. Um, when it comes to culture, we have the best of the best. So, yeah, this is my, this is my, my, my belief in my heart, so. Follow me. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Um, 
Yes, I was saved alive. Yes, I was saved alive. Thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoy. God bless you.